Let's look at um, now covalent bonding. Uh, in terms of Lewis. And so remember now we have a sharing of electrons. You know, and that's basically since both uh, elements are now nonmetals. We have a sharing of electrons to reach the noble gas. Electronic configuration. So still the same driving force in terms of ionic bonding, you know, with loss or gain of electrons. Um, but here now, since we have elements on the same, you know, in the same region of the periodic table, we like to do the same chemistry. Um, they decide to, you know, meet somewhat halfway and, and decide to share um, electrons, right? It, it basically explains um, you know, why um, some elements are diatomic. So, you know, hydrogen is equal to H2. And that's because, you know, each hydrogen atom in its Lewis dot sense has, you know, one electron. And if they share that one electron together, they end up with the hydrogen, you know, molecule. So here we have a covalent single bond. And if we consider, you know, the hydrogens, you know, both of the of these hydrogens are like helium, right? Again, there's the noble gas. So with our idea of a single bond, that's a sharing of two electrons between elements. We can go a little bit further in terms of maybe looking at oxygen. Oxygen is O2, also a diatomic. If we look at oxygen's octet or valence electrons, it has six. So we could represent one oxygen like this and one oxygen like this. And so they can actually uh, share those electrons. In terms of the unpaired Right, if we look at these electrons that are unpaired, right, now the oxygens actually share each one of those. And so that leads us now to something that looks like this. Where here we have a covalent double bond.
And if we look at both of our oxygens, both of these are like neon. Again, our, our noble gas, right? Neon has eight electrons. And each technically one of these, each one of these oxygens has eight electrons around it, right? If we think about the sharing of electrons, just to kind of go up to the top with the hydrogen, right? One of the hydrogens could look like this. That's what it sees. And then the other hydrogen looks like that. So that's why they both look like helium. And we can say the same thing down here with, with our oxygen. That one of those oxygens looks like this with its eight electrons because they're all either on it or sharing. While the other oxygen has that eight. And so that's where that octet idea comes into play now with oxygen. And now there's where we see now a, a covalent double bond. And so this is just a sharing now of four electrons between elements. And the last scenario, I mean, we're going to talk a lot more about Lewis dot stuff in, in subsequent lectures. But in terms of this introduction, um, we could look at nitrogen as the final one. Nitrogen also being um, a diatomic. Uh, nitrogen has five valence electrons. And so if it shares all three of each nitrogen's unpaired electrons, we would end up with something um, like this. So we're still sharing the unpaired electrons. We see that from our nitrogen molecule or nitrogen monoatomics. And so that leads us to the sharing now of six electrons between the two nitrogen atoms and so now we actually have the final layer of bonding in terms of covalent bonding which is the 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 triple bond And so if we look at both of these nitrogens, they're just like um, neon as well. You know, our, our noble gas, where they both have access basically to eight electrons around them. And that's the final layer, as I said, with the triple bond. So that's two, four, and six. Single, double, and finally triple. As far as now, um, you know, covalent nomenclature. Of binary molecules. Um, 
we we still do kind of the same uh you know gambit you know as far as the rules you know the most electropositive comes first or is first in the naming of the molecule you know and it has you know the same name as what we find on the periodic table So that's still the, the, the first idea um, with our second, right? The most electronegative is essentially last in the naming and there's also, um, you know, N I D E suffix change as well so the first rules are, are still very much the same um, in terms of one and two most electropositive is, is you know is first um, and same name as what we have on the periodic table while our most electronegative uh, is you know is last and we still have that you know, IDE suffix change that we're looking at. You know, since both um, elements are nonmetals, right, we cannot use charge. you know, or balancing of charge um, do, you know, to determine um, the formula. So we need basically Greek prefixes. to, um, you know, help us understand, you know, how many of a particular element is in a molecule. So we have this notion of, of Greek prefixes, right, to tell us how many, you know, of that element we're actually looking at. So... You know, these are ones that um, are pretty common, I think. You know, we have, you know, one, which is mono. We don't tend to use mono too often, but occasionally it comes into play. Carbon monoxide, as an example. Um, but we tend to start off with two and, and go further with that. With, you know, di, tri... Tetra, Penta, Hexa, Hepta, Octa, you know, Nona. And then we can go to 10 with Deca. Well, we, you know, to be honest, we don't get much past 5 and 6, but. These are all, all the Greek prefixes that um, we have. So let's do some examples of, of, of these. So let's look at C, CL4. So here, right, there's our most electropositive. And last is our most electronegative. The four here 
is going to be telling us we have tetra. So in terms of the first bit, we would well have carbon. For the last bit, we would have chloride. And then for the number, we would have tetra. So we have carbon tetrachloride. Let's do um let's do another one. Okay, so a little bit more complicated here with N two O five. So again we see our nitrogen here is going to be our most electropositive. We have our oxygen, which is our most electronegative. And so that's telling us now as well that we have two different terms in terms of, you know, how many we have, you know, di and we have penta. So we would have nitrogen, the first element, the more electropositive, we would have um, oxide for the second element, right, the more electronegative, and then in terms of that Greek numerology, we would have di and penta and we we tend to see you know you know these two vowels coming together so it's somewhat of a simple simplification with dinitrogen pent um, oxide So that would be, and then just with a little experience, we'll, we'll get to, to all these like oxides and sulfides and, and things of, of that nature. Um, you know, one last example. You know, one that we all know already. This is one of the, the few times we see um, the mono. So we have a carbon, which is the most electropositive, our oxygen, which is the most electronegative, um, you know, there's one of each, so we really don't have that term, mono, I mean, we don't tend to use it as much, so that's why I just want to use this particular example. Um, where we would say, well, I have carbon and I have oxide. Um, it's already assumed that the carbon is one, so it's it's we don't see monocarbon, um, but we do see, you know, the the mono um, oxide, where again we're dropping out that one vowel. In, in the process. For carbon monoxide. So that's naming of covalent type molecules. Um, we don't have any of the polyatomic issues or anything like that with these covalent molecules. We'll be looking at very simple binary um, molecules.